successfully through the efforts of the actors, Screaming Mad George, and the rest of the crew working as a team for this memorable special effects sequence come to life, as we see in this final version of the film. Freddy Krueger kills. He kills with humor and style. And in Nightmare on Elm Street 4, Freddy continued this tradition in a big way. Freddy was never one for letting his victims get away. And although the character of Joey, played by Rodney Eastman, survived Freddy in Part 3, you can probably guess that his luck ran out in Part 4. In Nightmare 3, Joey was seduced by a beautiful nurse who turns into Freddy. In A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, another beautiful woman seduced Joey. This time, it was the poster girl of his dreams that came to life. To create the illusion that poster girl Hope Marie Carlton has turned into Freddy, a diving tank was built to allow the actors to work underwater and to create the image that they've appeared inside the mattress of Joey's waterbed. The entire bedroom set was built over a water tank. Behind Joey's headboard is the unseen portion of the water tank, which allows the actors to submerge underwater, holding their breath and positioning themselves for the scene. Next, the scene is rehearsed for camera position with Joey, Hope, and Freddie. And then the cameras are ready to roll. Because the Nightmare on Elm Street films feature one spectacular special effect after another, the producers have learned how to film these elaborate effects in a cost-effective manner. Special effects are very difficult, and the key to doing this inexpensively, why we can do these films inexpensively and most people can't, is because we run un units that just do the things that take six hours. If you want to do a makeup effect and it takes six hours, you can't have a whole crew standing around. You take a small crew. During the filming of the waterbed scene, a separate crew was on another soundstage filming yet another elaborate special effects scene. This time, the unlucky victim is Sheila, played by Toy Newkirk. Sheila has made the mistake of dozing off during a physics exam, which has allowed Freddy the chance to take her life. After some initial shots of Toy and the other actors in the scene are shot, the special effects crew gets to work. The scene calls for a mechanical arm to break through Sheila's desk and grab her while she's taking a test in the classroom. The mechanical arm is controlled by a crew member situated below Sheila's desk and out of camera range. It's extremely important for both the mechanical arm operator and toy to understand how the scene will be played out. And with the help of Justin Clarenbeck of DreamQuest, the scene is rehearsed. That's right. There you go. Now, not on the road. Yeah, okay. Now, pull down. Okay, now you're violent. Now, the whole time... Rehearsal is complete, and cameras begin to roll. This is definitely one scene that will not only grab Sheila, but moviegoers as well. Paper, right, and break through the ice. And, okay, struggle, okay, and out, up, okay, and now, get her face, all right, and little camera left, okay, down, pull down, go down, go down, go down, go down, okay, back up, back up, okay, and push him away. Push him down, struggle, 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 down, down.
down, 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 pull out. One of the challenges for all of the actors in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies is having to work with the mechanical as well as visual effects. For Lisa Wilcox, the biggest challenge in appearing in a Nightmare film was reacting to frightening objects that weren't really there. A lot of the special effects have a personality, and you have to react to that personality. Even though it's not a human being, you have to react to that thing. I mean, there's a thing with the pizzas. And there's little, little faces, okay? And they're supposed to be my friends who died. And there's little screaming faces. And I'm going, okay, this is the yes, okay. <laughs> and react to this little head that's screaming. And so that is very, that's hard. One thing that helped Lisa on her first feature film was director Rennie Harlan, who was always there to guide the actress through her demanding scenes. He's very aware of everything going on around him. And he reacts to it and responds appropriately. And it's... It's really nice to see that because there are directors, this is my first feature, but doing other projects, there are directors who don't say boo to you. <laughs> they just say do it, you know. But he is always coming over and saying, this scene, do you like how it works, you know, and how do you want to play? And, and he's always listening and, and wants to get your response and your contribution. For director Harlan, his toughest challenge came when trying to bring all of the special effects elements together for the final battle between Alice and Freddy. I think the most challenging sequence is our final church sequence that's going to involve a lot of makeup effects and mechanical effects and optical effects and stunts and, and it's going to take a couple of weeks to shoot and involves three units and a lot of collaboration from, from different people and that's, that's, that's very hard to coordinate but I think that sequence is also going to be very interesting. To create the dazzling array of special effects called for in this scene, Rennie and the producers turned to Steve Johnson, whose amazing work can be seen in such films as Ghostbusters and The Howling. What it is, is it's the end sequence. They wanted it to be the most spectacular makeup effect sequence in, the, in this film. And they wanted to really give Freddy finally a real death. In the other ones, he's just kind of poofed away in a puff of light. And they wanted to really let all of the people that he'd killed really get a chance to get back at him and beat the hell out of him this time. So we just carefully and cleverly planned it out so that the basic trick to the thing is intercutting between an oversized prop that stood about 20 feet tall of Freddy um, and small size props. And with some strange tricks like Dutch angles and a lot of smoke and moving cameras, hopefully we'll fool the, fool the audience and they'll never know the difference between the two. Killing Freddy Krueger, as you might imagine, is no easy task. And to pull it off, Johnson had to use several carefully thought out devices. The nature of this thing was basically 